All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You can stop your search. You found it. It's the Passionate Producers Podcast, episode two. And I'm your host with the most, Mad Jeff Music. Don't even try me, play. <laughs> Don't look at me. Yo, what's good, my people? Man, I'm so glad to be back here because I find it very difficult to sit down long enough these days to put my mind to like recording a podcast, like getting my thoughts out. But some things have been on my chest later uh, lately. Oh, that's the sound of a Red Bull because I am living by chemistry as part of my thing. Um, but dig this. This late at night anyway. Anyhow, check this out. Um, opinions right? Opinions. What do opinions matter to people, right? They, they matter a lot to people that aren't confident about what it is they're out here chasing, right? If you, if you have an attitude that nothing's going to stop you, you know, from getting a, to your goal, then it doesn't really matter what people's opinion of you is, right? I mean, aren't you thinking, I'm listening to you, but I don't really hear you because I'm focused on, you know, getting to my goal. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how I am. I don't expect that from people, but they, opinions can cripple you. You know, if, a, if you're concerned with what a person is thinking about you, you know, if you're overly held down with the angst of being in a group of people and you're concerned about what they might be saying about you, I can tell you that that's just wasted energy. I mean, I've been in those situations in my life and I realized that they're the same whether you're in a classroom that you're first introduced to for the first time or you're on a football team trying to work your way into the starting lineup or you're in a band rehearsal trying to rise to the top or you're in the music business trying to be seen amongst thousands of others, right? We all have that innate fear that we're just not good enough. That's by nature, right? We have a fear that we're not good enough. And if we think that a person, you know, in the room also agrees with that, you know, we almost, we almost can see that on a person, whether or not they're in a, you know, in agreement with us that we're not somebody that they would trust or, or somebody that they would have confidence in and, you know, whatever that judgment or opinion is that they're trying to put out there. So we can't let that really affect us. We have to, it's nice to listen to people sometimes because it's the polite thing to do. And if you don't, you'll develop a reputation for not listening to people. And and I remember going through my 20s and, and into my 30s where I just decided that, I, you know, I'm not going to listen. So if it appears like I'm not listening, just stop talking because I, you know, I got it all worked out in my mind of what I'm after. You know, sure, I made lots of mistakes and I ran into things that um, I probably could have used some of that, some of that advice or some of that knowledge. But to me at the time, it was just people yakking at me. You know what I mean? And, and I didn't want people just yakking at me because I was focused and I felt like they were breaking my focus. So you know, I went through that period. And during that time, unfortunately for me, I think I developed a reputation as a person who was sent, who was known as to be difficult, you know, because that's what they labeled me when I wasn't listening to their opinions about what they thought I should do, how I should do it, what, what I should wear, how I should wear my hair, whatever the deal was, I wasn't listening. So they were saying, well, this guy, yeah, man, he's difficult. Mad Jeff is difficult. He won't conform, you know. I mean, when I first started making records up in Minneapolis, I was told those initial recordings that I was on, either as an engineer in the studio late at night programming drums, whatever I had done on those initial recordings, I needed to, I needed to be diplomatic and accept the fact that I was a new kid on the block and that quote, someone who said to me specifically early in those early days, you should just be happy to be here. So the credit has to go to the senior guy or the engineer who is here and, and who is established and who people assume is doing the actual recording. So my, you know, this is an opinion that these people had and I thought it was completely wrong and I rebelled against it right from the beginning. And to be honest with you, it set the tone for everything because I knew right away if you were willing or capable, I guess, of 
of crushing my dream in that in that way by saying you know hold on not gonna put your name on this record you know or whatever then damn i'm 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 not in agreement no i'm not in agreement and i'm not listening to the reasons and so forth and now i'm trying to formulate a plan for myself for my team for my family that will get me to my goals because i realize that no matter how sweet this situation appears to me currently, how beneficial it is to me currently, uh, in order for me to get to a certain place, I'm going to have to dismiss these opinions and ideals of people about the level of my uh, capability or the ceiling that's placed on what I'm trying to do. And I got to get out here and get mine. You know, come hell or high water, I got to get mine. So I got to stop listening to people. So I shut people off and I just start. So, you know, and around that time is when the nickname Mad Jeff, you know, came about. And, you know, he'll probably never admit to this, but Jimmy Jam himself, <laughs> Jimmy Jam himself is the one that quoted me, you know, gave me that nickname Mad Jeff. And I think he, in, in, in his mind, he was doing it in jest because there were some things that I wasn't happy about. You know, I, I wasn't happy about, you know, because uh, you know, I was a resident engineer. I was right there on staff. I wanted those opportunities. And I wasn't and I wanted to be given the opportunity. I wanted somebody to say, you, we, we're going to see what you're capable of, you know, on this level. I mean, not, don't get me wrong. I got lots of opportunity. I'm just saying that, you know, in certain areas, I wanted to be that guy and I wanted to be groomed to be that guy mixing every record that came out of there, just like the guy there before me. Um, but you know, th that and some other stuff. I mean, there, there's lots of stuff. There's lots of personalities. You got to understand you're dealing with a lot of guys that are all, you know, fighting for the same, the same end game. You know, they all just want to be recognized. They want to be compensated. They want to be featured. They want to be heard. You know what I'm saying? They want to be seen. You know, everybody's got that same mentality. So you're going to bump some heads. You're going to be envious of some, some guys that are getting those opportunities. You're going to be jealous. You know, that happens in this world. I mean, that is the nature of this beast. And people that make it up through that, cloud of dysfunction where people are all judgmental and opinionated and tr and cr and basically crabs in a barrel you know the, you know when you break through that because you stop listening to the mentality and you don't adapt to the mentality of the masses and you say I am a standalone so when you know when that name when that nickname was given to me in jest or with a, with a tone of sarcasm I you know I I I realized it and I kept it and it stuck. You know, a few people started throwing it around. The next thing you know, it was there and it was being branded, baby. And it's been branded since 1991. So it's on with that. And the Mad Jeff is a thing and it's been a thing with all the CDs and all the work that I've done. You know, Mad Jeff is a thing. It's a brand, baby. And it's not, and you know, because you've got to find your silver lining in every situation. You know what I mean? And you find out what's best for you. And for me, the best thing I could do was brand Mad Jeff and turn it into Mad Jeff's black butt and start trying to get some shine so I could create a legacy in this business where I was, you know, I wasn't concerned with, you know, splitting those proceeds with anybody. But, you know, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other podcast because I'm going to tell you, you can do deals in this industry where you might appear to be, you know, the artist might appear to be making money or whatever, but in fact, he's just getting ganked by the label. Whoever's running it, whoever's whoever's cut him an initial twenty five hundred dollar or three thousand dollar check or whatever the whatever the game is. You feel what I'm saying? But that guy that's controlling the sales is really the guy with the bottom line. And you have to almost you gotta go in and audit a guy that they're doing that you're doing business with just so you know if he's legitimately paying you what you're entitled to. You know, it happens. You know, Main Condition was is is one of the you know Minnesota's finest groups of all time. You know, you know, there's Jam and Lewis and all those guys are all from all from the same communities, all from Minneapolis. Guess what? Minneapolis, St. Paul, and guess what? On the same label, signed by the by one of their own, album produced by them and by one of their own, you know, made those guys lots of money, but in the end, Mint Condition, you know, uh, while on the prospective label, uh, sued and and audited Jam and Lewis to see exactly what kind of sales were happening in their in their career. And you know, you can't tell me that things don't change when that happens because it does because people take that personal.
People feel like you don't trust me, blah, 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 on and on. And in reality, you have to be like, it's business. You know, you got to be like, it's business. Now, I've signed some deals early in the day that burned all kind of bridges and friendships with me, uh, with, with people that I loved and admired doing a deal with a guy that, you know, that wasn't interested in part with any of the money. You know, so I've done that deal once or twice in my life. And I'm telling you, that guy is out there. That's why you got to be careful what you do, who you sign with, what kind of advances, what kind of back end. I mean, you know, is there even a back end? Let's talk. Back back end is another podcast. That's another conversation. It's another because is there even such a thing? I mean, you know, maybe there is if you're, you know, uh, you know, one of the top song- songwriters out there in the game right now and you got songs ping pong and back and forth and, and in rotation every year, you're probably seeing some back end on everything. You feel what I'm saying? But if you're an artist or a producer or a God forbid, a beat maker or whatever, you know, what you get handed that first time, you get a piece of that deal when you would initially sign on to be a part of that team or whatever, what they hand you, bruh. Make sure it's hefty. Make sure it's some stacks and stacks upon racks because the truth is that right there might be the only money you see from your efforts. And I'm talking about whether or not it goes straight to the trash bin from there or I'm talking about whether it goes number one around the world. You will need a lawyer. You, you feel what I'm saying? That's the nature of the business. Now, you would think, well, I know you're well, mad. Jeff is just a little mad. You know, he's just, you know, he's bitter. He's bitter. Listen, brah, which is, you know, in my mind, a term of affection when you have to deliver to someone you love a very tough message. Get a fucking lawyer, brah, because listen, this is not a friendly business to be in. So careful what you sign. Careful who you're dealing with because it will hurt you financially, career-wise. You know, you deal with the wrong people that know they're all, know other people and suddenly you can be blackballed. That can happen to you. And that's a tough, that's a tough thing when nobody in the industry respects you or wants to deal with you because people say you're not to be dealt with. Again, that's back to opinions, right? That's somebody's opinion, somebody's detailed opinion to another person about you who they may not even know. They just know that you're not going along with that bullshit when they tell you you can't have your name on the record or you can't get paid for this gig or whatever it is that people do, you know, the nightclub gig when you do the whole show and the house is packed and then the guy tells you at the end of the night we didn't make any money. I've been there too. I did that in the better end in New York City with uh, my homies, Blue Jean, yeah, my boy Jason, yeah, yeah, did that, got ganked, been there, I'm telling you, that's why I'm here though, I'm here to give you that kind of scoop, because what's the best way to get feedback from somebody full of passion other than the passion it produces podcasts? Yo, I'm your host, Mad Jeff. This is episode two. Ooh, a conscious flow, baby. I'm telling you, man. No edits or anything like that. I might remove that burp I had when I sipped on the Red Bull a little bit. Hey, but listen, yo, I'm a holler. Till next time, peace, Mad Jeff. <laughs>